Hi, I'm Sherry Annick, Churchill Ri Librarian. Today I am reading to you the story of Little Babaji. And um, this story is written by Helen Bannerman and illustrated by Fred Marcelino. You'll like it. Once upon a time, there was a little boy and his name was Little Babaji. And his mother was called Mamaji. And his father was called Papaji. And Mama G made him a beautiful little red coat and a pair of beautiful little blue trousers. And Papa G went to the bazaar and bought him a beautiful green umbrella and a lovely little pair of purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. That sounds beautiful. And then wasn't little Baba G grand? So he put on all his fine clothes and went out for a walk in the jungle. I typically don't wear my fine clothes when taking walks in nature because, you know, I get them dirty, but let's see what happens to him. Maybe he's a neater walker than me and can avoid the mud more easily. And by and by, he met a tiger and the tiger said to him, little Baba G, I'm going to eat you up. And little Baba G said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. So the tiger said, Very well, I won't eat you this time, but you must give me your beautiful little red coat. So apparently we are in this reality where tigers like red coats. So the tiger got poor little Baba G's beautiful little red coat and went away, saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Baba G went on, and by and by he met another tiger, and it said to him, little Baba G, I'm going to eat you up. And little Baba G said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. I don't give you my, um, I'll give you my beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger said, very well. I won't eat you up this time, but you must give me your beautiful little blue trousers. So all his, it seems like his new clothes are slowly going away. Let's see what happens. And that's the trousers on the tiger. Kind of silly. So the tiger got poor little Baba G's beautiful little blue trousers and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Baba G went on and on and by and by, and he met another tiger. And it said to him, little Baba G, I'm going to eat you up. And little Baba G said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. But the tiger said, what use would shoes be to me? I've got four feet and you've only got two. You haven't got enough shoes for me. Good point. But little Baba G said, you could wear them on your ears. So I could, said the tiger. That's a very good idea. Give them to me and I won't eat you this time. Look at the tiger with it on the shoes on his ears. Looks a little silly, right? So the tiger got poor little Papa G, Baba G's beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. And went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And by and by, little Baba G met another tiger and it said to him, Little Baba G, I'm going to eat you up. And little Baba G said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up and I'll give you my beautiful green umbrella. But the tiger said, How can I carry an umbrella when I need all my paws for walking with? You could tie a knot on your tail and carry it that way, said little Baba G. So I could, said the tiger, give it to me and I won't eat you up this time. So it looks a little silly. So he got poor little Baba G's beautiful green umbrella and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. So it looks like little Baba G gave away his shoes, gave away his pants, his jacket, and his umbrella. So what does he have left? Nothing. Let's see what happens next. It's a little scary. And poor little Baba G went away crying because the cruel tigers had taken all his fine clothes. See, I'm looking pretty upset. Presently, he heard a horrible noise. That sounded like grrrr. 
and it got louder and louder. Oh dear, said little Baba G. There are all the tigers coming back to eat me up. What shall I do? So he ran quickly to a palm tree and peeped round it to see what the matter was. And there he saw all the tigers fighting and disputing which of them was the grandest. And at last they all got so angry they jump up and took off the fine clothes and began to tear each other with their claws and bite each other with their great big white teeth. So you can see the clothes are there. Hopefully they're okay, but they're getting, they look pretty fierce. I would not want to be there behind that tree. I would have been running. And they came rolling and tumbling right to the foot of the very tree where little Baba G was hiding, but he jumped quickly behind the umbrella. And the tigers all caught hold of each other's tails. And as they wrangled and scrambled, and so they found themselves in a ring round the tree. So they're all tied up, right? Then when the tigers were very wee and very far away, little Baba G jumped up and called out, Oh, tigers, why have you taken off all your nice clothes? Don't you have any more? But the tigers only answered them with him with grrrr. So you see, they're all tied up to each other back there. Then little Baba G said, If you want them, say so, or I'll take them away. But the tigers would not let go of each other's tails. So they could only say grrrr. So they're all holding on to their tails. And they're in this circle. What do you think would happen if there were four tigers and they're all holding on to each other's tails that kind of almost knotted together because they won't let go? This is a good thing for Baba G. So little Baba G put on all his fine clothes again and walked off. And the tigers are very, very angry, but still they would not let go of each other's tails. And they were so angry that they ran round and round the tree, trying to eat each other up. And they ran faster and faster. Look at them. Wow. Till they were whirling around so fast you couldn't see their legs at all. And they still ran faster and faster and faster. They can go pretty fast. Till they were just all melted away. And there was nothing left but a great big pool of melted butter or ghee as it is called in India, round the foot of the tree. Wow. Do tigers normally turn into ghee? Now Papa G was just coming home from his work with a great big brass pot in his arms. When he saw what was left of the tigers, he said, oh, what a lovely melted butter. I'll take that home to Mama G for her to cook with. So he put it all into the great big brass pot and took it home to Mama G to cook with. I think if I saw a puddle of melted butter in the in the woods as I was walking home, I don't know if I'd be able to, if I would really want to pick that up. I'm going to throw it in there, but maybe that's just me being a little bit nervous about that. <laughs> when Mama G saw the melted butter, wasn't she pleased? So they had good melted butter, it sounds like. Now, said she, we'll all have pancakes for supper. Yum. So she got flour and eggs and milk and sugar and butter, and she made a huge plate of the most lovely pancakes, and she fried them in the melted butter, which the tigers had made, and they were just as yellow and brown as little tigers. And they, then they all sat down to supper. And Mama G ate 27 pancakes. And Papa G ate 55. Wow, that is some appetite. I eat, I think I eat a lot of pancakes, but oh my goodness. But little Baba G ate 169 because he was so hungry. I guess all that fighting tigers makes you super hungry. I hope you liked the story of little Baba G. This is definitely a little fun read. Um, thanks for listening and keep on reading.